I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing: I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now, just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. The working man is a sucker. Hey, everybody! Welcome to the Working Class Holes Podcast. I'm your host Ed McGowan here in the break room with my co-host Josh Accardo. What's up, buddy? Yes, sir. What up, man? I ate these Ritz toasted crackers, and they were sour cream and onion. Now, listen to this. So, my wife was out of town for four days, basically five days. Just me, my son, and the dog. Fucking raining. Uh Uh-huh. All can't take him to do shit. Yeah. You know, I ended up getting a sitter after he was already all, just someone to sit in the house so I could go out and do two spots. Uh, and through all that shit, I forgot that these things were sitting in the back of my snack cupboard and I found them Sunday night and I, this big ass, I almost ate the whole bag and I'm still, the point is, as you were introducing me, I'm burping it up. Yeah. Sour cream and onion. I don't. I don't. They're really the tastiest f- fucking things I've ever had in my I whole life. I don't fuck with sour cream and onion like I used to. I'm more of like you know what I do now. The Maui sweet onion. You do. You ever do a Maui no. sweet onion? Who make, but who makes that? What? It's like a River Lake or some or Blue. I don't know. What's <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> fuck. Blue <laughs> deep sea Blue uh, Ridge <laughs> Blue Ridge potato Idaho River Lake I don't know what, I don't know what the name of the chip company is because uh, that's the thing you got to find the place that has the exotic flavor I've seen the sweet Maui onion in a couple of the things and you know what I figured out too so we just switched we were doing like getting our food from uh, like a fr- fresh direct you ever do fresh direct where they oh, deliver yeah. it to the house. It's so fucking expensive. It's just, it's a lot of money. It's crazy. So I figured, I found this other one. Somebody was telling me about like a regular supermarket does it. Yeah. Um, stop and shop. So oh, now, yeah, yeah, I know stop and they have, dude, they have the Snyder's honey mustard and onion. Do you know what I'm talking about? There's yes. pretzels. There's yes, pretzels, the dusted. Um, and it's, that's, that's it, same flavor. That's a sweet, <sighs> sweet uh, onion. Yeah, dude. I put down. Here for I the, got so so much MSG in there, bro. That, that's what I'm dude, saying. Okay. Here took was, me down. So for the break room, you know, here, our break room, the studio, I've got us the Smart Choice popcorns. I got three different flavors, and I got the little bottle waters uh-huh. right here in my I retro like Coca-Cola fridge. Ah. And... I'm a curator of, of experiences. I want to experience stuff. So here's the deal. I was I smoked a lot of marijuana, mm-hmm. and that shit was hitting my doped up brain in such uh, a way yeah, yeah, yeah. where I was thinking, I don't even need the chip itself or whatever the fucking Ritz toast is. Just spray the, give me the spray, dust. and give me the dust spray, and then I'll, every now, I'll just get a piece of Wonder Bread next to me, that's all I would need for my brain to be where it was at. Well, and it was kind of depressing, if I'm being honest. Like, oh, it's so sad. Because it it's it, the so... dopamine makes you go, "This is something magical." No, this is just fucking chemicals being shot into my body. Dude, it's so sad. The the depression I get from eating is worse than like any of the well, not any of the drugs, but a lot of the drugs I've. <laughs> it's it <laughs> really like, when you just fucking hound it. Like I got home last night from spots. I got home at like twelve thirty. I ate a chicken thigh, uh, half a block of manchego cheese with some rosemary crackers, and then I ate a half a bag of peanut granola. Dude, it was like so bad. Listen to you talk about subpar meals in a way <laughs> that makes them sound delicious. Like, like Ed and I were on the road, and we went to a Bob Evans, and he ordered steak and eggs, and he's cutting the steak, and he's like, I don't know. It's more like a medium, you know, medium well. <laughs> I like that. I mean, we want to go back there and talk to this ex-convict. Shh, with short she order, cut a steak and eggs, Bob Evans, and I'm just cutting it. And I'm like, it's more like, more like medium well. <laughs> just such I a get, snob. Like, Dude, wrong with Dude, I mean, hey, so what do you do, buddy? You put it on a like a, a sizzle, <laughs> like a Pittsburgh rare. Get that like an au poivre. You do an au poivre. <laughs> I remember this dude I knew when I was a kid who was getting married, and he was fucking white trash, man. And you know how when white, I'm white, I'm trash too. So that's why I can speak openly and freely about trash people and 
well, looking at you, we all know you're fucking trash. <laughs> but the <laughs> but the fucking guy, right, is you know, and they anyone anytime one of these, it's like if ever in Goodfellas where he's like, not for nothing, Jumbo, but uh, giving Tommy my place would be like putting a silk hat on a pig. Like that's every white trash person at a wedding, right? Yeah. They order the fucking tuxedo, yeah, yeah. they rent it, it doesn't fit them right, but all of a sudden they're Joe, you know, they're Rockefellers. So this lady who's <laughs> The bride's mother. I mean, they're eating gristle. You know that fucking wedding food that's the bare minimum yeah. money? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, the lady says no I, shit. I just want to interrupt here and say, I haven't heard anything wrong with what you're saying so far. <laughs> Go ahead. Continue. So this lady. <laughs> this all sounds like an enjoyable event. I'm sitting there, and this lady says to one of the bake. My grandmother was a banquet waitress for Hilton for 60 years dude uh, yeah. I mean no joke Yeah. up until That's she was awesome. 80 she could carry one of those giant yeah. circular trays I mean the giant ones yeah, yeah, yeah. filled with salads Just, and shit and like t stacked up she too, was the right? strongest yeah. person yeah, I, I mean so cool. she's unbelievable yeah. I don't know how she did that so I'm always really weird about the wait staff Oh, because I just watched my grandmother work, and I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I, I'm not some like fucking superhero. I'm just, yeah. I just always pay attention to how people talk to the wait staff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this lady says to the banquet waitress, "The father of the bride doesn't have his salad yet." <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could fucking throw a shot glass and bank it off that lady's head. The father of the bride <laughs> doesn't have his salad. She. Uh, 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 doesn't have a salad yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so good. So good. What? Uh, I can fucking the see it. Yeah. Fuck. All right, All right Betsy, come. Just down, take right? a breath. Yeah. <laughs> She's also the one who was like, "Can I get the creamy Italian on the side?" Yeah. yeah seriously. <laughs> oh, Miss Hoity Toity, <laughs> fucking holds her pinky out and she's slamming Coors Lights. Uh, fucking creamy Italian. I used to have this bit about my family being trash, uh, like how we were so trashy that. Anyone, I just remember as a kid growing up, anyone that ever bought like my dad a beer, like, this guy's all right. And I always th try to do this bit where like if Hitler bought my family like f a 30 pack of Coors Light, they'd be like, he gets a bad rap, but uh, <laughs> you, may, you know, he cracked a few beers. I might be misunderstood. He's all right with me, you know? Just the purchase of alcohol. Yeah, right. Like, you ever go to like a really sad, like Blarney Stone in a uh, strip mall? Yeah. I, know, I, I don't know. I, I said that more for the audience, not <laughs> you. I know you have. But I used to go, sometimes in my hometown, I'll go into those places, and I'll buy a guy a drink. You'd think I'd fucking bought him. I paid his mortgage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how severe the addiction is in some of those, like, lower middle class cities. Or, like, and it's weird, too, living in, being in New York, like, having, like, you know, four or five twenties in your pocket. You pull it out in one of those bars. And be like, hey, look at Mister Money Bags over here. Yeah, it's eighty dollars, dude. It's eighty dollars. Yeah, I, I have eighty dollars on me. Yeah. <laughs> it's sad, dude. Yeah, it's I, I, I I grew up that way, and it's funny now. Like, I just started getting over being impressed with like stupid shit like that. Oh. I'm just now at that point where I've made not a lot of money, but enough money where stuff like that does not impress me anymore kind of thing uh -huh, where I don't uh -huh. read. It doesn't resonate with me that someone's ahead of the game. It used to make me feel like you remember 80. Those dudes seeing that 80 bucks brings up a lot of insecurity, right? They probably don't remember the last time they held on to 80 bucks. That wasn't already assigned to something else. Like it's just in it. You know, 80 bucks. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that I, feeling is, that is hard to shake, that shit. I guess, I guess I don't, um, but some of the, I, I waited tables for a long time, dude, so I always had cash on me. You know what I mean? And I, yeah, was, I, and guess. I was always buying drugs. But that's your like fucking that was, rent money, too, that you, I oh, mean. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's no. not, but it was yeah. accounted for. Well, it would go. I think now people. It would still go, though. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it would still, like, it was so. Just as a when you're making that cash money yeah, as a waiter, yeah. dude, like that mentality. Like I did that for ten years. I waited. That that's for 10 an years. adrenaline rush too, you having just, money in your hand. Yeah, you, and yeah. it just goes, and it's like, hey man, I'll just pick up an extra shift. Yeah, you know what I mean. That kind of like uh, hand to mouth kind of. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hand to mouth, hand to foot, foot to mouth, hand to foot disease, hand to mouth. <laughs> Hand to mouth. Living hand to mouth. <laughs> hand to foot. Hand mouth to foot. <laughs> uh, my son had mouth to foot. 
Ed's family. <laughs> Long line of mouth to foot, motherfuckers. Hey, we worked. We worked. We're hand to foot. We're hand foot to the foot, foot, we, uh, foot the around here. <laughs> you know, paycheck to paycheck, hand to foot. <laughs> Uh, welcome to episode two of Working Class Holes, everybody, by the way. Thanks for listening to the first one. Uh, as you can hear, Ed's still fucking reminiscing about his glorious waiter days. <laughs> I love it. That's the only working class job you really had. No, no. I worked in a factory. I worked, oh. uh, I worked in a factory. I mean, the first job I ever had. Whoa, 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 whoa. Was, what kind of factory? They manufactured uh, x-ray machines uh, was the big thing and refrigerators. Well, okay. This is a great start for the show. Because this is some working class shit. I, I would love to ask some of my upper middle class friends, rich friends, when they were growing up, how many times they took jobs where you had to sign like a, you could have some terrible shit happen to you waiver. Like, I feel like that's a job where uh, yeah. you got to sign a fucking waiver to work there or you'll sue them because it's like guaranteed some terrible chemical might touch your skin or, yep, yep. right? Well, this was more... Uh, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, That's a working class job. Yeah, like you could, you had to have uh, steel-toed boots. You couldn't be on the uh, floor without steel-toed boots. And I was like, yeah, they're steel-toed. <laughs> <laughs> you wearing your sockinies? <laughs> I just have old like waiter shoes on. <laughs> Like, yeah, Who's this guy wearing Crocs? <laughs> He's killing on the, on the assembly line. <laughs> yeah. That uh, but that was a waiter. Jo- or that was a that was a factory like factory job. Like the, there was, and you see all kinds of just archetypes there. Like the old man, like the sixty five year old man who's like, because my job at the, so I went there to be because I was living with a bunch of fucking dust heads. We were smoking a lot of angel dust. I was living in Northeast Philly, and uh, the guys were like, I lost my job waiting tables, and the dude was like, Dude, get a job with me. We. We fuck. We grind metal. We just sand metal all day. So your teeth and metal. <laughs> yeah, right. And I was like, that sounds perfect. <laughs> Something to focus on yeah. and doing an activity. Just get high and just sand metal all day. Uh, and I was like, why was, is before you keep going? Why is that about certain drugs? Where having something that you can fixate on is so much. There's so much about it that people that I know that do certain kinds of drugs used to love like my dad smoked a lot of meth and he would just like take apart the fucking yeah, vacuum and never yeah, put it back together i don't know i don't have an answer for why that is I, I i know like when we would we would be getting high you know when it got really like crackhead kind of uh and the there would inevitably every single time you know we'd all be in this room and then somebody would just like start picking at the rug and be like yo did we drop it did we drop a piece do we dry, and then start like smoking the rug. You'd start, everybody would start smoking the oh. rug. And I was just like, dude, no, we didn't drop anything. Like, I, I, I never understood it. Like, I was like, no, I am sure. I am very sure we did not drop anything because I've smoked it all. <laughs> I am positive. I have not taken my eye off of that bag Literally, of rocks. I am the most put together person here. <laughs> I have not, big things ahead of me, guys. Stop smoking the carpet. Me working the road with Josh Accardo, <laughs> a mid level headliner. <laughs> I smoked all this crack. <laughs> it's all been smoked. I it, I met this dude at a comedy. The, my buddy of mine was like, hey, I'm going to do a comedy class, but I would like some profession, like professional comedians come in and talk oh, to the class. Yeah, yeah. And uh, all the people went around the room. And this one guy, this fucking Mexican guy, badass looking dude with like one of those Van Dyke. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like badass Vato looking dude. Yeah. I had a Mexican dude with that. And you know, like, so and I'm much in San Diego. At the time, like, uh, we were in San Diego. Yeah. So that's like hardcore. Yeah, yeah. Fucking Vato Locos for life totally, down there, bro. Yeah, they don't yeah. fuck around, those essay dudes. Yep. And he, he's in the class. He wants to be a stick. All those dudes have that troubled life and then they yeah. want to do something with it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And he gets up and he's like, I am a former meth addict and my. I uh, got addicted and I had to go to recovery because I had a beautiful chow with beautiful white fur over it. And I smoked crystal meth and I pulled every. Yeah. Until the chow was bald. It was the wildest. Wow. And of course, that guy would be a guy that you show up to a gig and you're sharing the fucking comedy condo with. Yeah. The guy who's telling you about <laughs> skin and his chow, his poor dog. Wow. That was his moment of like, I got to get my life together yeah yeah yeah. hey what that accent let me ask you a question about that accent because that is it's not a mexican accent it's a because i hear i hear it like 
it's more of a uh I'm not very good at accents. No, no, no. I'm this is a departure though, because I've always wondered about this, because I hear it it's 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 more of a cadence. Yeah, it's a cadence. It's a cadence than an accent, right? It's it's this staccato kind of a lot of that it come over here yeah yeah, yeah right because you hear it going, Holmes? you hear it like it's a, I hear it in, I've heard it in Hawaii Sandy, yes. you hear well, it in Hawaii right well I'm Hawaiian that's pidgin right. English that's a different kind of thing but doesn't it have a similar kind of I, I hear it like, like a so, Native American so sometimes pigeon, too like, here, here's would be pidgin uh -huh. it's like um, so when when Europe like the the British took over Hawaii or like uh -huh. started coming in uh huh Hawaii took so they could communicate with the British their language and slammed it with old English. Okay. So sure. like my grandmother will say bloody a lot and call the trash rubbish. Uh -huh. And she's from Hawaii and right. it would um like hey boy, hey, why are you win you, you never win go get the stew. It's like a oh, lot yeah. of I these guess that is. I guess that's that is why different. if you hear me talk cuz I my grandfather yeah. had very strong pidgin English. Uh -huh. In fact Pigeon English is now considered a second language. Like that's a second language for me. It's now an official language. Oh, cool! Because it is. If you meet like a deep fucking Hawaiian dude, uh -huh. almost impossible to understand him. Like oh. I can understand it, right. but I have to be around them now yeah. more. I, like I grew up in, like that. So, but I haven't been around it in so long. But yeah, that's like a thing. Pigeon is very. And then with California essays, there's like a prototype. Like a stereotype, I guess, of uh -huh. that they how they talk. Cause like, right. if you ever watch Colors, like yeah. fuck you, Pac Man. Yeah, yeah. yeah and right. then when George Lopez does his shit, like right, it, right, right. But a lot of those dudes, they really do. They talk like talk that. like no, that. No, no, I went to real, school with a lot of but that's Shell Town. Like, it's not like a. Uh, it seems more gangster like dudes. a. Uh, yeah, right. Like a. Um, like a. a a cadence than yeah. an actual it's like, a accent. Right? Yeah, it's got this. It's kind of like wait, what the fuck you doing over here? You know, that kind of New York kind of thing. Yeah, right. Yeah. Anyway, I think when I you're there, you want to you want to talk like that. Every time, yeah. Every time I hear it, though, I'm always like, it's so interesting <laughs> because, and then I guess the Philly accent like has a little more like just um, I I don't know. I talk fast. Do I talk? I talk fast. You know, it's funny. Do I, I don't fast? notice your Philly accent until you're in the beginning of your sets or when you're starting the podcast. Oh, so maybe it comes out a little thicker when you're trying to focus on what you're saying. Oh, I don't know, interesting. Oh, but then yeah, it yeah. dissipates, right? As you get more comfortable, oh, if it's that's the right as word. I'm like I, forming my thoughts. Yeah, yeah. When you start like when, I start forming when my you're thoughts, not I go, thinking, like, in it's, a, yeah. I'm like I'm back in like a primordial. The hey, 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 oh <laughs> shit, primordial. <laughs> I don't know. If that's, I don't know what that word means. <laughs> I just want to say ooze now for some reason. Primordial. <laughs> I worked with this dude. I I worked at this gym for a long a lot of my jobs after I got like after I dropped out of college were like gyms because uh -huh. I played football in college oh, and yeah. I'm like oh I could just hang around all these girls and I was like let's go to the gym and so there what was did a, you do at the gym though what was your I job. Think it's, one like of the guys who scan guy? the fuck. Oh, scan. So I've done it all at the gym. I've yeah, been yeah. a trainer. Uh -huh. I've been a sales guy. And okay. I began as a front desk guy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I just remember there was this dude who was a trainer. And he was deep. And this is before I've ever been to the West, the East Coast. He was from deep Boston. And he had that fucking. That rack. Yeah. Like, don't make like the, the car. Whatever. Yeah. I can't do it. Can you do it? I park the car. Bah! Yeah, right. It's like. uh so Fenway, you going over to Fenway Park? Park, the yeah. park. So what, I got tickets to the Sox. <laughs> the Sox. Yeah. That's a, dude. We're going to the, yeah, no. And, I, and then I just it messed was, it And up. he was massive, and he I, he did a lot of steroids, and he had those, uh, he was huge, but he had like those gorilla tits, like a fucking come down to a point. Because you know when you get too much testosterone, you get bitch tit? Oh no man, idea. dude! With so in dudes, I especially barely guys, have testosterone. <laughs> <laughs> barely check out as a man. Barely. Like that. <laughs> uh, so you've you've seen Fight Club, right? Uh huh. Yeah. So yeah. you know Meatloaf's character. Oh, those tits. So he was a bodybuilder. The character. That's why he had those those tits. Uh, but they call it bitch tit. It's in the bodybuilding community. Uh, uh -huh. And he had he was a dude that actually, I think he wrestled for WCW. Oh wow! Uh. Like he was just one of those roided out dudes yeah, and he yeah. was like a movie tie guy and uh -huh. I just feel like if someone told me that dude liked to fuck men in the butt I would have believed it 
There was just like so much masculinity oh, right. that he had to tell everyone he was so masculine. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. They are like, what are you? Are you hiding something? Why are you so? You're six foot six. Yeah, like nobody would even think otherwise yeah. if you weren't. And then the uh, hardcore like Southie. So hard. He was like really. I don't even yeah, know if yeah. he was even from Southie, but right. he was like real Southie, yeah, Southie, yeah. bro. Yeah, yeah. That job fucking sucked. So, oh, how many different gyms did you work at? Sucked. Uh, like a Gold's gym? Were you talking about? Like, what no, are you talking I, I don't want to say because it's a uh, chain, and it's a chain? I, okay. I stole a lot of shit from there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a lot. You, I hated the fucking job. I, I look around, and there's a couple of dumbbells yeah. holding up with doors. I was like, oh, <laughs> this is more than twenty years ago. But, anyways, the point. I remember they let this woman who was a uh, she. She was definitely deaf, oh, but uh-huh. there looked like there was some other shit going uh-huh. on. But definitely kind of illiterate. But uh-huh. they, she was really a stickler for the rules. Like you know how people kind of like that. They don't she's probably you do. Aut- it's probably she's probably autistic. But I mean, back so, then you didn't, you didn't know what else. Yeah, yeah, it was like know. early two thousands. So no one really knew. Yeah, 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 right. But she knew the fucking rule book forwards and backwards, dude. If you won infraction, she would tell you. And I remember one time I, I came, she worked the night shift and uh, I came in one morning to, you know, set up and there was an incident report sitting on the, the desk, right? So I'm like, all right, I'm going to read this. So I'm reading the incident report and she's written it. Uh-huh. First of all, it's, you know how Charlie Day writes and Always Sunny? It's like ima- <laughs> like images and symbols and shit. I mean, she definitely can't write, read or write. <laughs> <laughs> limited in the capacity uh, of the reading I've, and the know, writing. I've never come across she has a full time like job. You're telling me yeah. people can't get jobs out there? This that's lady wild. has a fucking full time job. Oh, I would love uh, to come across something like that. It was insane. Yeah. So I'm reading this thing, and apparently, so it starts out like this: man says toilet seat loose left. Like she's giving the directions. It's like every which way stall in the blah 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 part of the men's room he sat down he's to take a shit she writes to take a because i think that's what he's saying because i remember the people that would come in late night were wild dude they they were not refined people you think at one point she took like she worked one day at a courthouse and she was one of those little (laughs) stenographers stenographers. (laughs) no She thinks she's a stenographer. She's Maybe like, I could see her like, doing that. This is how you make you outside, <laughs> just looking through the window, trying to read lips. She, <laughs> so she goes. The next part is the part I loved. It was he sat down to take his shit, and the seat pinched his balls. <laughs> and then next line, his balls were bleeding. So just the fact that this dude sits down to take a grumpler, right? His nuts get caught between the toilet seat and the toilet bowl and splits his nutsack where he's bleeding profusely. And now he has to relay this to this half deaf, definitely autistic, definitely some other shit adult at the front desk. I... I had to go in another room. We had racquetball courts. I had to go in the racquetball court to laugh because and what and then this is the best part. I showed it to this other kid who was a real idiot who worked at the front desk with me. He had made copies. He was handing it around the gym and we all got called in to corporate. <laughs> The guy literally, we had one of those, like, you know how you have the regional guy would come in? This dumb fuck goes, hey, uh, his name was Dave. Hey, Dave, check this out. It's pretty funny stuff. <laughs> what are you doing? We're about to all get fired, you fucking asshole. Uh, uh, that's fantastic. Uh, uh, dude. I, that's the fucking best. When somebody would photocopy something like that and pass it around. Oh, oh it would make man. your day. You hated your God. job so much. It would make my day when something classic oh. would happen. And it could have been awful for somebody, like god awful, like ruin their life for a portion. It would just be the best day. Anything else could happen. It doesn't matter, dude. We it all was the we best. all got to read that crazy fucking script. <laughs> Tab, the, what's the best part about that to me though is the dude holding his nuts. Oh he, yeah, explaining it to this woman and just like the fury. The fury that just must have been going through this guy as as she's writing down. I so you're saying love it. So you're saying it, I think of it monthly. 
In fact, my wife knows the story so well and loves it so much. Sometimes she'll just he's nuts. She'll go, he's balls. <laughs> she did it pinch he's balls. <laughs> It pinched he's balls. <laughs> That's my favorite line of all. There doesn't life doesn't get any better. Than, I should have just quit then. He's balls. He's balls. That's what that's the name of this episode. He's balls. <laughs> Seriously, he's balls. That's what it should be. The uh, dude. So I worked in the gyms. Gyms are wild. I worked. You can get uh, away with a lot in a gym. You can hide stuff. You could steal. Like they have so many products you could steal. Supplements. So I worked. Uh, this is a, this is a great job. I worked as the night janitor for a Living Well lady. You know Living Well ladies? No. So it was like Elaine Powers or one of those. She's like smelling their It's the only panties. ladies. It's only ladies uh, are allowed in there. Oh, like a Lucille Ball, like a Luce, whatever. What, what Lucille, Lucille, Lucille Ball, yeah. whatever. Lucille, 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 Lucille Roberts. Roberts. Yeah, yeah. Lucille Ball, Lucille Roberts. <laughs> whatever. Yeah. They the, both um, help the abs. Sorry, go ahead. So now my mom was yeah. the manager there and my stepfather while they were dating, ran the cleaning company. And so my mom, and I was a fuck up, you know, oh, living yeah. at home. I can't they gave you that job. So How old were you? So talks in uh, 19, 20? 40. 20, yeah, just last week. <laughs> I do it on the weekend still. Well, we're not on the road cleaning Lucille Roberts. The, uh, so she talks him into uh, giving her son a job. So I'm working there. Me. Oh, he must have really so wanted I to was, be with your mom, dude, was, yeah, to totally help her right, out like know, that. He must right? have been in love with her ass. I know. So now he brings. Uh, so I'm busboy at uh, Hoolahan's, so, and then after Hoolahan's, after my shift at Hoolahan's, I would go and clean because it only took two hours a night. Hey, remember when Tony Soprano told AJ, "Hey, the first stop on the Shipbird Express <laughs> about Blockbuster Video, you're making two stops on the Shipbird Express." <laughs> What's the second stop tonight, old Ed? On the Shipbird Express. I gotta go vacuum this lady spa. <laughs> I gotta go clean this lady gym. <laughs> you and your hey, hula hands hey, fucking stupid wait, shirt. Hey, choose your I'm in my hula hands up. I'm in my hula you hands. Change it to your other stinky shirt. <laughs> I'm just vacuuming this this lady gym. <laughs> Why do you have so many jobs? <laughs> they must needed you out of the fucking house, dude. I love how oh, kids are allowed to like be themselves. You're fucking working two I had two, jobs. I had two jobs. And happy. At 19. Oh, dude, it was the best. So we would go. So me, the dishwasher, and the other bus boys, Todd, who I talked about last time, we would go. Uh, he would, They would come over, and we would smoke weed in the sauna. Cause it had like a little oh, sauna, yeah. so we would get high, and then you know I'm like, all right, I gotta go clean the place. All right, I'll see you guys later. So we would that became like a regular, it's like a Kevin Smith movie. Little yeah, it was like totally like a little hangout kind of spot. Then it evolved to like places because we weren't 21 yet, mm -hmm. so places to drink. Oh, dude! And now it was in a strip mall, so I had the keys to the front door. We could go out into the mall. Dude, we had bikes, skateboards, just ripping around. And this is before Dude. security cameras were everywhere. No, yeah, it was just a guy. We got his schedule. The security guy would walk, come through, and then we'd have like an hour to just kind of rip around the mall, dude. This little, like, strip. And this is why like we can't, we don't need security guards anymore. Because they miss <laughs> shit like that. Dude. Can you imagine you're paying all that fucking rent for a retail space, and you find out. 19 year old kids are pissing in the corner Dude, rip, just leave, you know shredding you across when, the fucking when you could fountain. skid on a, in a bike and you just yeah. leave oh yeah, the you tire, leave the, the tire marks yes. all over to just especially on those it. floors too oh, that would best. piss me off oh it was so fucking i'm cool. no capitalist i'm just saying like you know, that's it, how some guy's paying paying his rent, dude. He's like, oh, dude. paying for his house, sending his kids to that, college listen, off that money. Listen, it wasn't a fancy mall. That, even more so, though, it's like some guy with a Payless shoe store who fucking... Right, it's Payless shoe store. Yeah, yeah you yeah. know. So there's Payless in there. It's still mom it was, and pop era. You're talking about the like, 80s, right? Or early... No, 90s. It was like 90... Oh, I forget that you're yeah, uh, not that old. Yeah, yeah that's that right. Old. Uh, but so, uh, but dude, we would have fucking parties in there. Like it was like, 20, dude, I can't imagine what you would have been capable of at 19 20, 20 with that people. kind of access. It, and it was back when they had, you know, you would, before you used to have to get like a quarter keg of beer mm -hmm. to have like enough beer. And then they had beer balls. Do you remember beer ball? No. Yeah. They were around for a little while. It was oh, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes. Yes. You had that tap. It yes. Was like a box with a yes. ball of beer. I, 
It was like two and a half cases this worth is, of beer. I, the reason why I know that is because every weekend, my family, when I'm a kid, just for no reason, they're getting a keg. Yeah. They're getting one of those fucking beer yeah. bombs. Yeah, that's the yeah. kind of place I come from, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Where it's like a weekend isn't right unless someone got a keg. Yeah. Like, why do we need a keg? It's yeah, for like yeah. a fucking birthday party. Yeah. Quarter keg of beer. Not yeah, for a yeah. Saturday yeah, yeah, yeah. in May. <laughs> it's a random Saturday. Well, and there was always a thing. Like, if you went to a party and there was a keg there, like, the move was steal the tap. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because you always, that's what always you're renting. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, in the keg itself, but yeah, I, I know yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, you had to yeah. get the tap. You yeah, could yeah. always, if you could steal a keg, yeah. you, you had the tap. You were, you were, you have the tap. You, you were, were a stud. Good. You yeah. show up like, hey, do you get invited to every party? Oh Yo, yeah, Ed's got a tap. <laughs> yeah, it's a, for sure, dude. Uh, those are the fucking days, man. That's so crazy. The keg of beer. That was such a fucking thing. Isn't that so funny that you went for the party and not to get laid? I always went like, for the party. Yeah. Yeah, for me, I would. I didn't do any of that shit until. My 30s. Oh, wow. So I was there to meet girls. Mm-hmm. And it's not fun when you're fucking sober to meet girls in those scenarios. Yeah. You're just filled with so much insecurity, but you're like this confident party guy. Well, I mean, I don't know. Confident how... in your partying, I mean. Confident in my partying. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And then it was always Which like... by default, those guys, I remember when I was really young, like it, especially into my early 20s, those guys were getting laid constantly. Yeah, I wasn't getting laid constantly. <laughs> I got That's laid. A myth. <laughs> no, well, I wasn't one of the. I was a fucking goofball. You know what I mean? Like I was a goofball kind of kid, like with tweaky, you know, weird. So when you're kid. doing like these parties in the little mall on the back end of your job, what you're not meeting any girls? You're- no, there were girls there, but I was always. I was never. I never felt like I was like the. I was. I. It sounds weird to say, but I was like, I would get like leftovers if that's such a weird fucking way to put it. But like the girls that like also felt rejected, you know what I mean? Like that kind of situation. But like the girls, like the top tier, the top tier rejects you would get. uh, Yeah. Like, no, the top tier, like the girls, they were, I was not up that level. You know what I mean? I was like, we're both lonely. We're both feel worthless. You know what I mean? Kind of way. Why not us? Yeah, right. Like, why Let's, not us? You seem nice enough. <laughs> <laughs> that's I feel like that's I, I. It's only my perception of the whole thing. Like, but that's I feel how I feel like I always got laid. Like, eh, you seem nice enough. You both are just at the lowest point. <laughs> yeah, we just we don't feel great about ourselves. And like, we started here. He's not gonna make me now, feel worse. Now I'm here, <laughs> and I think you are too. <laughs> Because you, no one's above anyone in that scenario. Yeah, you no. know for a fact, like nature is selected in that moment, and you guys were meant to be. Oh there yeah. There yeah. was like I'm. I've always been kind of weird looking growing up, and then I fixed my teeth and stuff, and things. I got a little, you know, clear from the kind of middle level. Uh-huh. But being the middle of the group sucked too, because you always think you're a little hotter than you are. Like I always thought I was way better looking than I really was. And you're going like, why? I used to torture myself. Why am I not with this cool, pretty girl? And in reality, the middle girl was feeling the same thing. Why am I not? And we should have been together. At least right. if you're at the lowest or the highest, you know who you should be with. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always... But here's the other thing. I uh, had broken teeth. I had these teeth. Uh, are, I had broke my teeth. I flipped over on a bike and uh, smashed my... <laughs> well, you never my, told me about the broken teeth. <laughs> I had broken teeth. So I, you know... I was, I knew what I was, you know, walking around with. I had broken two front teeth. This is teeth. in your like pussy getting years? Yes, yeah, 20. I was 20 walking around with broken teeth. I had broken teeth. I mean, just, they're still broken. I mean, uh, these teeth, they'll fall out. We'll be on the road one day and I'll go, oh shit, here they go. They'll, fl- what? <laughs> they fall out. They, every, every six or seven years, they break, they, they you start chipping away, and huh? They just, they, and then they just drop. Like the Mona Lisa. <laughs> It's like the Hoover dance. All of a sudden, it just starts to crack. Yeah, and they just drop. And then the next thing you know, you're like, hey, "This is a real me." <laughs> I'll tell you what. A cup of water looks like Goldschlager. There's <laughs> chips of teeth are there. There's a picture of me uh, hosting. Uh, was it host or when you do the wedding, when you're the host, a fish, a fish when you're fishing. There's a picture yeah. of me officiating a wedding with broken teeth. I mean, who lost the bet <laughs> to book you? No one else could have took the internet it's test buddy. to do that. It's my buddy. It's my I mean, buddy. Yeah. that is hilarious, yeah. though, that the pictures are you. I just like that you refuse to fix them. It's funny because we are alike in a lot of ways, but so different. I'm so vain. You are, you're much oh more vain than me. Oh, yeah, my yeah, God. Yeah. I yeah. could not. Yeah. I'm getting. 
I'm not saying I'm not vain anymore, but I'm definitely more self-aware now. So I can kind of laugh at how vain I can be at times, but there's no way, man, I would go into have I would go bankrupt fixing my teeth the minute they were chipped. I just I mean, would now do it. I would now I just because I know how crazy I look. But like uh, I didn't you can't show up to some places with teeth like that. You, oh. you turn the whole room I, off. I remember I was working at uh, <laughs> you want to live was, your life as a bit every was, day of it. I was working at that whole hands and one of the waitresses says. Eddie, you gotta fix these teeth. <laughs> just pulled me aside like a like a like an aunt, or you know, just a concerned like you know, like a like a good high school teacher. You know, like that one English teacher. It's like, hey, you gotta pull this together. She's like, you gotta fix these teeth. And I'm like, it's fine. Thank you. I appreciate it. I, I, I'm good. I got it. I'm I good. got this. You do not right. got it. I'm not spending money on teeth. Okay? Five of your teeth <laughs> are fucking flat out chipped, bro. <laughs> All of your teeth are chipped. It's like bad china. I gotta find a picture and I'll post it in the video. I'll you got it with the fucking. Oh my god, I love that. Uh, all right, I got a I got a bad gig one for you. I got a good okay. bad gig one for you. Um, <laughs> so I am doing the comedy store, and I get off stage, and this guy's like, "Hey, uh, I work for the House of Blues, and we need an opener for Mariah Carey in two weeks." And she requested a white comedian open for her. And I'm like, oh, okay. And he's like, what, did you want to do it? And I was like, yeah. That's fucking great. Oh, this is, could be my, I, I've been doing it about a year and a half, mostly like open mics. Oh, wow. It was really early on. And wow. then I had just got moved up to the Wednesday, like the, they call it the, uh, it's How much? like the pop-in show or whatever. Not the Sunday. It used to be the open mic, but then they moved into the Wednesday, which was a real show mm -hmm. where they only had like a lot less, you know, you, like one of their people, their house show. Mm -hmm. So that's where this guy saw, saw me, my set. And it was like an eight-minute set. How much time did you have at this point? <laughs> Dude, I was awful. 15 minutes? I, mm. Not even? Yeah, like, I think the longest I ever stood on stage and talked was 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah. And, and that, this dude yeah, said... And most of it was just that eight minutes a little slower. It was, yeah, yeah, it was very bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was sure. stupid confident. Yeah, of course. Uh, so I'm, he's like, yeah, so it pays 100 bucks, which then to me, I thought he said it paid $50,000. Because yeah. I thought as a comedian, 100 bucks. Yeah, well, I mean, because this is 10 what, minutes, 15 fit, whatever. years ago? Yeah, yeah sure. I thought it was a yeah, lot of money. Yeah, absolutely. Now you're like, I'm opening for a major star and I'm only getting 100 bucks. I'd be like, fuck you. Yeah. Um, then he's like, and you got to do 20. And I just took the gig I'm like yeah. okay I'll figure it out yeah so I'm like doing spots at the store and I'm just doing like conversation jokes <laughs> just trying to see if I could fill mm -hmm. if I could build at least seven eight more minutes right yeah, yeah, yeah I got an uncle who like this died right out of the, like probably a day before the gig uh, or something like that which kind of fucked me up it was weird it's a weird scenario to go into I was yeah. like I'm doing this for him <laughs> just oh, the yeah, dumbest yeah, shit yeah, ever yeah, yeah. like well, oh this is gonna be my big break yeah, yeah. you know I, yeah. I it's crazy how they allow people like me to exist with the fantasies in my head that were going on about what this gig meant yeah and I get there I take my buddy with me who was also a comic Ray Combs Jr. Uh, they meet me at the gate. It's like I'm playing a 5,000 seater. It's the open air arena. I'm in San Diego. I'm like, dude, this is it, bro. Him and I are like fucking feeling yeah. like we're stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They give me a little, you know, behind backstage VIP a little shit, yeah, the yeah, little yeah, lanyard yeah. with the credentials. Right. Uh, they're like, here's where you eat. They're making soufflés. Fucking Randy Jackson's back there and oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's hot professional background dancers oh, from dude. Mariah Carey yeah, in the dude. early 2000s. So the most beautiful, talented yeah. people you've ever seen talking about how the helicopter choppered them in before the gig. It's just like fucking mind blowing for me, right? <laughs> dude, and you got like 10 minutes of dick jokes. I, I'm <laughs> dirty. I told the guy, I go, listen, dude, what you saw tonight is what I do. I don't want to do anything else. I'm not clean. Yeah. I'm fucking dirty. <laughs> So I'm thinking I'm squared away, right? This guy said, yeah, no problem. Right. So. Who's this fucking guy? I don't know, but he was not at the gig. <laughs> <laughs> he was not. When I got there, I, it was not him that greeted me. So the dudes who greet me, he's like, I'm blah, blah, Mariah's road manager. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, I'm trying to be my Mr. Profesh. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, I got a road manager. Just, you know, I'm trying to fit in. He's like, yeah. he goes, he stops me. He goes, hey, uh, 
there's no don't stay if you see Mariah don't stare at her for a long time right and I'm like either I'm giving this guy the vibe yeah. that I'm gonna stare at her yeah. like an idiot or she literally has a rule kind of like that prince rule where you can't I feel like you were probably giving off the <laughs> If I had to guess, I mean, she may have that role, but in addition, you were totally, you were like, totally. This is the guy who's going to talk to Mariah? This is the fucking coolest fucking group. So when do I meet Mariah? <laughs> well, are you going to take me backstage to meet Mariah? <laughs> they even told me this pass gets you in everywhere except for Mariah's dressing room. Like, they specifically said. Yeah. Like, I just walked. I, I was that stargazed yeah. where they thought, okay, <laughs> this is all, I'm putting some new shit yeah. together. The one I, 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 I Okay. So <laughs> I am now, it's like 30 minutes before I go on and I'm losing it, dude, on the inside. Oh, and I'm, I'm trying to hold it together. Dude, and yeah. this, I'm so overstimulated with all this the, shit. Because the biggest spot you had at this point is the store. Yeah. And yeah. What, what, oh, yeah. What, like sixty people. What, yeah, that room? Well, no, two hundred. But 200? but so oh, what? Yeah, yeah. It's like this is the break yeah. of all breaks. Apparently. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> then I go on. I'm about to go on. They're like ten more minutes, and then the the all the like crew guys were watching Black Hawk Down ah, in this room. Uh -huh. So of course I end up with all like the working class guys. Yeah, we're all watching Black Hawk Down. Yeah, that yeah. calmed me down. Those 100%. dudes were we we're shit talking, yeah. and it was kind of cool to yeah, talk yeah, to them. Yeah. I go out there. <clears throat> The whole front row is like a hand, mentally handicapped adults. Oh. And it's one of those giant stages. So the front row is like 30 seats long. And I feel really uncomfortable because I'm doing like a blowjob joke. Yeah, right. <clears throat> and they, I'm telling this blowjob joke and these slower adults, I've ruined their whole night. They oh, are like, no. they don't know what's going uh. on. Dude. I fucking panic and I bail. No. And R Ray Combs was timing me from the side of the stage. And I'm like, how long was that? He goes, y you did eight. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm banging her in the ass, right? Ooh. <laughs> I'm gonna go. <laughs> I bombed oh, so wow. I bombed so hard. Wow. There was these long steps up to where I had to meet the Booker guy. And I didn't want to walk those steps so bad. I stayed backstage until literally they had to remove me. <laughs> like they were the dancers were stretching and shit. Like I'm sitting on this fucking fold out chair and these dancers are like putting their legs above their head. <laughs> Hey, who's that? Uh, is that the kid that freaked all the... Is that the, is that the kid that freaked all the... The worst part about it is I thought like... Here's how much I thought that I was going to be a star. I thought I'd ruin the whole night for not just me, but for everyone. Oh, right. Yeah. And then I looked out. They had just blown up like 30 beach balls. Yeah. And I, I was like, oh. Nobody cares. And that was almost wor a worse feeling than... Yeah. Feel like I bombed because yeah, yeah, it yeah. meant something before. Right. And when I saw that, I was like, "Oh, I mean nothing. Nothing. I was a glorified beach ball. Nothing. Yeah. They just wanted to keep people yep. entertained until yep. they had her warm them up a little. Yeah. Put put some people out there. We're kind of doing a little sound check on. You know, we're getting. Yeah. 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 We're tweaking some stuff. Yeah. yeah basically, yeah, yeah. You exactly. Were like, I was you were, there to just take the heat. Yep. It's like the twenty minute check spot. Yep. Yeah. That's wild. Brutal, man. Oh, All baby. Right. <laughs> oh man. That's crazy, though. That's the, a good story, though. All huh? the slow adults just like they, so confused. It, oh, that's now I would have been I would have made fun of anybody because that's just lowbrow and yeah. But I would not have given a fuck. No, I would have enjoyed that bomb. Yeah. Oh my! It would have been like the yeah. greatest story. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. If I got that gig now, just eat a dick oh, for twenty minutes. Uh, give me that, that gig now. I would yeah. take as many shrapnels as yeah. possible. Then two years down the road, I know we're gonna rap soon, but two years down the road, I meet Dom Herrera, who was a I was a big fan of Dom Herrera. Sure. Love Huge Dom Herrera. Love. And somehow, you know, I got lucky enough to hang out with him after the show, and we were all chatty. You know, comedy stories, you know, is like that. Where you know, if you work there. You, you could just, a lot of guys will talk to you. Yeah, yeah, sure. And he was talking to me, and you know, I told him I was a big fan, and I told him about the Mariah Carey gig. He's like, oh, one time I opened for, I think it was Joan Jett. He's like, fucking boot off the stage. <laughs> Came right out and did it again the next night. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, all yeah, right. I think awesome. that was like my first intro into 
the shit we do is yeah. we get our ass handed uh, to us. Like we're the lowest of the uh, low. Yeah. People treat us like garbage. Garbage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it made me kind of love doing this even more. <laughs> what's what's that's what's so great. That's what made it's so hard to get a win. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, that when you get the win, it's just, man, it's such a good, like, it's really like, you know, I used to be a drug addict and everything like that. Like, it's, I like, I, it's that rush. Yeah, it, it really is. It is that rush. It is. I love it. That's so why much. it's so hard now, you know, the, the podcast is us talking about associating it with jobs now because we're actually doing it for a job. So you have to think about the economics and that's when you, I, it really hit me like, oh, dude, this is a fucking working class job. Like, oh. I love yeah. it, yeah. but I fucking hate it so much. It's my identity to an extent, just like my dad's identity was working at the airport. It's right. just like what I do. Yeah, 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 I warm totally. the car up and I fucking, you know, it's like that routine. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, the different, like when I was a waiter, like that was really... That be, was my identity. Yeah, uh, waiting tables. Like you just, you like I just. That's you know, it's that kind of like that hustle, kind of that cash mm -hmm. kind of thing. Uh, it fed you. It fed something in you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's different. I mean, even I guess when you're a, a used car salesman too, like you're kind of you're yeah. like this that that adrenaline. You're that guy. You you kind of live that way. Yep. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Uh, well, welcome to the working class holes episode two. Um, thank you guys for listening. Uh, I hope you like this episode in the, in the first episode. Uh, I'm Josh Ricardo. You can follow me at Josh Ricardo. And I'm uh, Ed McGowan. Thanks for listening. You can follow me at Ed McGowan Comedy on Instagram. We'll see you guys on the next one. See ya. You can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can follow us on Instagram at Working Class Holes. Also, make sure you watch the full show on YouTube. All you got to do is type in Working Class Holes. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on.